Well, welcome everybody. I'm really excited to see this is the second of these events that we're, we've been holding in Central Bedfordshire. We had one before Christmas and um, we had a good cohort attend then, um, between 20 and 30 people. And um, it's really great to see so many people attend again and your interest in this area. Um, I'll just give you an overview of Community Energy South and the sector and what we tried to work towards with the Pathways Programme and working with Central Bedfordshire, the team at Central Bedfordshire. Um, so Community Energy South is um, a regional support network for the community energy sector. We've been going for about 10 years and um, we've developed the Pathways Programme to help scale up community energy and support communities that want to develop their own renewable energy but also support their communities um, with energy advice. So I'll take you through this process. And, um, and then you'll hear from some of the Community Energy South project managers with some case studies. And then, um, and then we can end the session going into discussion and how you and communities can be involved. Um, so Community Energy, um, in a nutshell, is about powering down and powering up. Now I'll explain that. Powering down is about providing energy awareness within a community. Um, we, we love to support local energy champions who can advise their local communities and give independent advice. And in, inadvertently in doing that, they also support the vulnerable and fuel poor um, residents and neighbors. Um, we can help train them up to do um, home energy visits so that they can go in and give independent energy advice. And, um, and that's really important we see in supporting people to, to move forward and lower their, their energy costs or take control of their energy in their communities. And so that's all about community resilience. Powering up is about the, the journey to renewable energy within your community and how we can all transition to using renewable energy, but also generating it locally. And that fits within um, heat and power. So it could be solar and wind, community wind or community solar or hydro, EV car sharing, and, um, and of course, retrofitting. So now where we've got rural communities who are um, off the gas grid, are using oil for heating, you know, supporting those communities to transition towards renewable energy and make the right choices. So um, thanks, Kelly. I will go on to the next slide. So we've developed pathways over the last 10 years. Um, we work alongside the national body for community energy called Community Energy England. And we're also supported from central government um, through the Department for Business and Energy. Um, they have a, a dedicated net zero um, team within Bayes who recognize community energy and support the movement. There are over 350 community energy organizations across England now operating. And um, really over the last 10 years, um, they've, been, they've become established as community businesses supporting their communities. And um, we connect those businesses with Central Bedfordshire through the Pathways Programme. And the Pathways Programme is a step-by-step -step approach to develop an area-wide community energy movement that aligns with the local authorities net zero ambitions and strategy and it supports local leadership towards those targets so local people wanting to be involved within um you know climate change but energy in particular and developing local groups that are, that are well established so through the pathways program we support with action plans towards that and and establishing not-for-profit community benefit societies that support their communities. And, and you can build your own renewables in time. It takes 
couple of years to develop a pipeline of projects and start to actually build them out. And um, one of the key aspects of community energy is that we raise the money from the community who can own and operate those schemes so that you can really take charge and um, and then all profits can be reinvested back into the community. So it's about creating a local economy around energy. And if we all think about it within our own community and add up how much energy costs are within our own community, it's a significant sum of money that is leaving the economy. So we're trying to, to make economies resilient through that process. And, and obviously on the back of that, it's about supporting local energy awareness. And um, at this stage, I'm, that picture um, is North Kensington Community Energy. And um, I like to highlight that because that was a community energy group that was built um, in North Kensington and um, Chelsea and Kensington um, after the Grenfell in the, the area, putting solar on the community buildings around Grenfell. And um, so they've developed a whole program now around that, so which is great. Thanks, Kelly. Um, okay, I'm really sorry to everybody in Central Bedfordshire, but to point you towards Surrey, um, but I think hopefully you'll get the point. <laughs> so we started our Pathways program um, about a year and a half ago in Surrey. And um, and this just gives you an example. So this is Surrey split up, you know, with Guildford and Tandridge and Mole Valley. And um, so we've helped support five new groups get set up across the county. And we're working with the existing community energy groups in that county as well. So in all now, there are nine community energy groups across the county. And, um, and what we do is connect them all so that they're all working together and link them up with the county councils or the council's um, climate net zero strategy so that we're all aligned and being supported. And that includes um, powering up and powering down projects. So thanks, Kelly. Right, um, my, my um, very boring diagram for some people, but this is just um, for those of you connected with the energy industry or aware of it, um, the local authority at the top will have a local area energy plan or a climate strategy. And what we want to try and do is get the communities to establish a network that becomes an advocate for that local strategy. And that means we can all grow towards net zero together. So it's a very holistic kind of bottom, bottom up, top down approach, but it's worthwhile explaining it at this stage. So that, that can involve public finance as well as community finance. Um, it's about consenting projects and consultation, um, but also raising community support and awareness and that approval for, for the route to net zero. And, and what we try and do through the Pathways program is establish that local community energy network and, and support you as a network of communities to net zero. Thanks, Kelly. So at this stage, and we're gonna take you through um, four or five um, case studies of other community energy groups around the country. So I'm gonna pass back to Kelly, who will take you through um, the Avesco case study down in Lewis in East Sussex. Thanks, Kelly. Just take myself off mute. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> so um, thanks, Ollie. Um, so Avesco, um, uh, Ollie is actually a, a director of Avesco. It's one of the first community energy um, groups in the country. Um, been going for a very long time. And their first project, very excitingly, something close to my heart, is on is a rooftop solar PV on Harvey's Brewery. And if you haven't tried Harvey's beer, then you're missing out. It's wonderful. Known as the Sunshine Beer. Um, Avesco have got lots of different projects. I believe we have someone from Avesco here today. So uh, you can always chip in if you like um, uh, and correct me and add, add something to what we're saying. Um, uh, they put a lot of solar on schools in um, across 
East Sussex um, and do education in schools about um, renewable energy and uh, with, with school children. Nick in the photo there does some great sort of um, technical sessions with, with children in, in the schools that have the, the solar on them, saving the schools um, a lot of money um, and obviously cutting carbon. They've also got a five megawatt solar farm uh, near Chichester, Meadow Blue Solar Farm, and that's been going for some time. But very excitingly, um, before Christmas, the new Ooze Valley Solar Farm, which is 17 megawatt solar farm, um, gained planning permission. What's very exciting, this is this is like a post subsidy, the first post subsidy project, um, and it's quite a large one um, out in Ringma in uh, near Lewis. So that's that's great news. They've also got um, a couple of um, other projects as well. Um, the Get Bike Crew project, which I'm very keen on because I'm a, a keen cyclist myself. Um, they've got electric cargo bike hire and delivery service based in Lewis. And um, they've also just uh, in, in partnership with lots of other organisations, including Community Energy South, um, won two million pounds from the Climate Action Fund to, to deliver um, all sorts of um, projects in, in the Ooze Valley. So um, they've been going for a while. Um, so they're, they're very experienced and, um, you know, they're a, they're a great project um, and, you know, we, uh, yeah, we, we've learned a lot from Avesco over the years, so we can pass that knowledge on to any new groups existing. Um, I'm going to pass over to my colleague Nicola, who's in the photo there, um, uh, to talk to you about Made Energy. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon. I am I'm on the board of Made Energy as a volunteer. I'm also a project manager at Community Energy South, working beside Kelly and the team in delivering Pathways programme to areas. Um, I love what I do, and I also love working with Made Energy. We've been around for quite a while now. Um, most of our projects have been about installing solar, community-owned solar, on the roofs of community buildings, and that was with the benefit of the feed-in tariff, which is now gone. Now we got to the point where we gathered so much experience and so much investment that we were able to develop a project on a larger community building which didn't even require the feed-in tariff because it was so economically viable. Um, that's on the roof of our local authority owned leisure centre. So we got a great relationship going with our local authority and they have even invested £20,000 in the project. So they are investors as anyone else can be when we launch a project. We also made use of the renewable heat incentive when it existed and put a ground source heat pump in another leisure centre. That was a 200k project. So we've amassed quite a lot of expertise over the years um, and it's, it's, it's caused our community, not just the local people, but people across the whole of the UK to invest. And we find that happens with most community energy projects. It's not just about relying on what your local community can afford to invest. You can open up investment to local businesses and businesses far away and individuals far away as well. Thanks, Kelly. Talking Tree is um, a group in Surrey who we've just engaged with they're one of our latest projects they were a client they're a climate activist sort of group that have a cafe um, they, they're sort of typical of lots of emerging organizations where they want to do a whole range of things not just community energy they came to us asking how they would go about developing a community energy project as one strand of their activities so we've helped them by designing a program of energy champions to do the powering down work that Ollie mentioned. And they were, they have attracted money from their local authority actually to, to develop that program, to train up some volunteers that they recruit and to resource them with some draft briefing materials um, and develop a program of delivery. So they, they are at the point now where they're gonna go out to their community and deliver that free service. Now the beauty of delivering a service like that through a community group, that's so well known and embedded is you've got trust. You'll find a lot of your residents, a lot of neighbours will be being approached by commercial organisations to do lots of retrofitting, but it's hard for that community to know who to trust. If you've got an organisation, a group who becomes well known and well loved and anyone can be part of it, that's when you'll find greater uptake because of that trust. Thank you. 
um, Tolsbury. Salisbury is a group in Essex who have become have joined our Pathways programme. So we've helped this group develop a strand all about community energy. And it's a really exciting group because they were quite a large group of individuals and they wanted to do all sorts of things with food, transport, housing, waste, and, and now energy. So we helped that group create a spin-off company. We helped them get incorporated, design their um, business plan, their project pipeline and look at opportunities which suited them in their locality. Now, so having set them up, we helped them find funds from various places, including their district council, to um, develop their project. What they've done now is they did something very clever. They bid to the public sector decarbonisation scheme, which you might know as Salix. They bid for a 600k project to decarbonise a large school in their town. Now, 400k of that funding has now been secured from the government on the basis that the group delivered £200,000 worth of community shares to invest in the whole school as a decarbonisation project. Now, we think this is a terrific way of harnessing government money, part, or so hand in hand with local investment. So we're really pleased to be working with them on that. And it shows the sort of journey that Pathways can bring about right from the start. Thank you. I don't know who's going to be talking about this one, but it's, it's me next. Nice. Thank you, Nicola. Hi. Thank you, um, thank you Nicola, for that. Um, really great to hear just to say um we're going to have a q a at the end um and we jumped a slide there explaining what was going to happen in today but we're get plowing through it so um uh, that we'll explain the pathways program and how you can get involved as as we move forward so i'll just talk to you about the wonderful energy alton based in hampshire um they are an existing community energy group um and uh they've been going for 10 years um, but we're able to support organisations that are either um, have been doing a, a community energy project for a while or similar um, sorts of things, you know, charities or CRCs, and we can help kind of um, consolidate them and help them grow. And that's what my colleague Laura has done in Hampshire with Energy Alton. Um, they have been running for about 10 years doing home energy surveys, um, as you can see for the picture, thermal imaging surveys of their properties to help them insulate them and retrofit them. Um, and they also have an energy advice cafe. So what we were able to sort of do with them um, once we started working through the Pathways programme is uh, apply for funding and the SSEN, as you can see there on the slide, is the local DNO um, and they um, have given Energy Alton some funding to work with micro businesses to do surveys with them. Um, and what's really great is often these things are set up by volunteers who want to support their communities and we've made, this funding has enabled um, a part time member of staff to kind of um, help grow the organization. And the other key benefit of this funding has been that they are able to train other community energy groups in Hampshire about the project, which is, you know, really great for sort of capacity building and cutting carbon, because the more people who are able to support their communities, the quicker we can reach net zero. So it's a really great project. So that's um, that's our case studies for today. And um, if you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat. We'll keep an eye on them and we'll, we'll do a Q&A in session, as, as mentioned. So I shall hand over to Ollie again to tell you about another case study um that he's been working on in Sussex. Thanks Kelly. Yeah I, I just wanted to, to to raise this one because it's quite um this is a project called Community the um Avesco um down in that you've heard about already um and the DNO UK Power Networks have developed with a number of other partners around supporting rural communities to have decarbonisation plans. And I thought it was really relevant to, to the area in central Bedfordshire um, because it supports the parish councils, the parishes around market towns and the parishes that may be off the gas grid and use oil for heating. And this particular community um, called Barkham did a local plan um, back in 2009 and they 
coming out the top of the plan was to look at how the community could plan for coming off oil heating. And um, with that in mind, this project was put together called Community Heat with the electricity network to say, you know, if a whole community was so engaged and organized and they came off oil together and went to electric heating and, and retrofitted their homes together, what would the impact be on the electricity grid? And actually, what would the benefits be for that community actually having a plan and moving together? So, um, and there are lots of learnings from this project, but it's created um, community cohesion, but it also provides um, a baseline for other rural communities to start to become organized and have their own action plans to, to decarbonize. And so it's a great learning that we could we could look at across central Pepperture. Um, and, you know, it's a bespoke program where you look at the different housing archetypes, how the, commu the community is established, and what the local supply chain looks like, you know, for installing renewables. And um, this type of project is often kicked off in a local area by having energy cafes for running an energy event where you could invite local suppliers to talk about solar or wind or heating and um, and just hear from people on different case studies and, and have a plan for your community. So thanks, Kelly. If we just go on to the next slide. So um, th that led on to the question is how it could work for towns and parishes. And we are looking at this across the country and we've had a lot of interest from, from communities across the country, but also from central government, because as we all transition to net zero and look at ways to affordably transition to low carbon, um, we need to be organized and look at the supply chain. And what this method looks at is working with a market town, but also with the local parishes. And that's kind of the basis of a community energy group. Um, so there's an example here of Saffron Walden, which again is over the border up in up in Essex. But they've established a community energy group in Saffron Walden. But what they soon discovered was actually that the town itself wasn't big enough for community energy. So they started to engage with the parishes. And in doing so, the parishes started to say, yeah, we're really interested in this. We use a lot of oil. You know, we have more space for renewables and what have you. So Saffron Walden Community Energy widened their governance. So they started to invite the parishes to come on to Saffron Walden Community Energy onto, onto the board of the Community Interest Company and actually start to work together. And the common denominator is the local town where people go in for their shopping and you know, where, where transport is in, on people's minds, but also connecting with the parishes and, um, and that common denominator of energy. So that's kind of what community heat led to and in supporting the growth of the community energy sector. And we see that's kind of a way that it could work in central Bedfordshire and it's the basis of our Pathways programme is, is bringing you all together and, and helping you develop an action plan for your community that is that is um, sustainable for you to lead on. Um, so that it doesn't come the job of one person, so that it becomes the job of a team of people who can work locally. Um, and that's the basis of our Pathways programme and why we've got people like Kelly and Nicola um, who hold your hands through that process. So thanks, Kelly. Okay, handing over to Esme. Thanks, Ollie. Thanks, Kelly. Great to see so many of you. So my name is Esme Dongi. I'm Project Director at Community Energy South. And um, I've got a couple of slides now to hopefully see how this relates to all of you in Central Bedfordshire. Um, and so we have teamed up um, now with Central Bedfordshire Council, and we're going to be working um, with you all, hopefully, over the next three years. And in the first few months, um, to January, February, March, we're going to start 
looking at how can we best develop this support for you. So what we want to do is develop develop amazing community energy projects in central Bedfordshire. Um, Kelly's going to be um, managing those. I'll be in the background supporting Kelly. Um, so I'm going to just talk you through each of the steps that we're going to be following, um, hopefully to build a really rich community energy landscape in central Bedfordshire over the next few years. So our pathways approach starts as step one. So this is where we are at the moment, step one assessment. So we are looking at What's the best approach in your local community? We want to hear from you and get your feedback on what are the opportunities, community energy, what are the challenges? How do we best go about this work with you? So I know there's a lot of people here today from town and parish councils. We really want to hear from you. Uh, we want to hear about any existing um, potential projects relating to community energy, what your ideas are any um, groups in your communities that may look to take these forward um, and there is lots of ways we can work with you so um, there's many town and parish councillors um, sit as a non-executive on community energy boards for example um, so it could be um, that we could discuss that with you um, it could be that you're there to promote community energy in your local communities or maybe you are um, working already in a related field if you've got any potential interest in community energy want to hear from all of you um, so please please do get in touch and what we can offer you um, first of all is what we call our first steps business support um, so we can arrange a call with you and we can talk to you about uh, in more detail what community energy is all about um, what it could mean to you in your local community and talk you through the process of setting up a community energy project or a community energy group and talk to you about what is needed to get started. Um, so that is on offer from February and what you need to do is put an expression of interest to us um, which we'll tell you about um, a bit later uh, and we will get in touch and talk you through this whole process. So um, step three, um, we will start to develop uh, tools and guides to help community energy projects get off the ground in your area. Um, as far as we know, there's no community energy groups in central Bedfordshire at the moment. I'm sure there is community energy projects that we're, we're starting to hear about. Um, so we want to focus in on specific tools to help you really get going. So that could include a startup guide, uh, it will include a funding tool. Uh, so a big part of what we do is, um, as Nicola explained earlier, is to leverage funding into local communities for community energy projects. So we will develop that suite of tools for you. Um, thanks, Kelly. This next one. Um, so training and networking. Um, we want to provide essentially training on all things community energy. So we can work with you at whatever level you're at and put together training programs and focus groups. Um, we've got a huge amount of skills and experience um, through the Community Energy South team. We also have a, a really wide network of mentors that we can draw, draw on across the country. Um, so we can start um, working with you if you have absolutely no skills whatsoever in in energy or if you are partway through your journey and have more complex um, issues or needs we can also troubleshoot on those and design training programs around those so um, initially we'll offer a startup masterclass a little bit later this year in the spring um, and then throughout years two and three of the projects we will start uh, really developing um, more advanced training for you. Uh, we're also going to be looking at setting up a regional community energy network in your area. So this will be facilitated um, by Community Energy South um, on a bi-monthly basis. Then we'll be getting people together to talk about potential projects. Uh, we'll bring in speakers and we will work with you um, in a lot of depth over the, over the coming years. 
So hopefully once we've got um, some community energy projects set up and uh, we're starting to move forward and have our community energy groups identified, we will start going into um, a fair amount of depth on in-depth mentoring support and training. Uh, we will look at uh, community energy businesses and creating a business plan for them, essentially, um, which is what's needed to put in place funding bids and to start really moving forward um, with your community business. And then we have a wide team of uh, project development specialists and we can start identifying which projects are going to be really uh, interesting and feasible in your local community and start to work with you to drive those forward. So initially that may be energy advice projects, it may be a small uh, small community project. And as you've seen with some of these examples that could in the coming years um, go to large solar farms. I've seen onshore wind um, get discussed in the chat. Um, yes, potentially we can work on all those. The planning system in the UK is still a bit tricky with onshore wind, but it is changing, it is absolutely changing. So the sky's the limit on the projects that we can support for you. And we're really excited um, to be doing this programme with you all. So um, fill in the expression of interest, please. If you have any interest whatsoever in community energy in your area, and we will be in touch. Hopefully that explains it. Thanks, Esme. That was really great. Thank you. Um, so, yes, as Esme said, the next steps for this um, is uh, the expression of interest. Quite a few of you have, you have said you've got um, parish uh, town um, parish meetings coming up this week. So that's good timing. Um, I am going to send out the um, briefing doc to everybody um, and the slides from from today. Um, and also the expression of interest form. It's a very simple form that just shows that you're interested in actually receiving some support from community energy cells. And we'll work with initially um, around 10 uh, different groups um, and do one-to-one -one assessments with you. And once we've received all those expressions of interest and the closing date for that is the end of the month. Um, and if you do have any questions, I think Nicola's put both of our um, emails in the chat. Nicola's going to be um, my support on this project. We, we always work in a, in a team, um, but I'm your first point, uh, point of contact. So my email's there on the slide, but it's also in the chat. Um, and then we're just going to go to some questions now. Um, Nicola, was there any in the chat that you didn't answer that you'd like to um, highlight and, and uh, ask? Um, I think I've answered the question about parish halls and Ollie followed up on that as well, but I think it'd be worth having a couple of minutes to chat around that because it is a really, um, really important one. Um, there's an area up in Northumberland which should come together as a cluster of parishes and they're looking at how they can be um, economically efficient with the measures that they want to identify and then try and fund. Is that right, Ollie? Have I captured that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you did. And um, to the, on the on the village hall. Sorry, Nicola. I was yes. slightly distracted by another question. So, yeah, absolutely. There's there's a um, organisation up in Northumberland that we've been supporting that actually looking at twenty village halls and how they can all um, be retrofitted to different extent depending on the buildings because, as we all know, village halls are um, they're all sort of different shapes and sizes, but actually up in Northumberland, they're actually looking at some of them being able to come off grid with batteries and actually be powered in the event of power cut. So, which is really amazing. Now that doesn't necessarily stack up as a community energy scheme that would give you payback, but actually what they've done is been very good at bringing regional funding in as well as community finance to to look at doing those retrofit programs. And, and then the village halls become a focal point for the community um, to go and use. So yeah, it's an important one. If I might add that in the community energy sector, most of the businesses that get formed are um, community benefit societies, commonly known as co-ops. You haven't got to um, create a community benefit society, but, but the ethos of, of the sector is to share 
and we find that if parish councils or community energy groups create a project, they're very likely to share that, what they've learned, the documents and the IP they've generated with someone else. And that really helps build up confidence and trust. So parish councils working as a cluster are going to, in my opinion, achieve more faster because they're having confidence from each other. So buddy up with, um, with your nearest parishes and, um, and make movement together. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks, Ollie. Um, Trevor, uh, you've got your hand up. Would you like to ask your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Yeah, I suppose it's I'm I'm uh, just a resident in Flitwick, which is a, a small uh, town next door to Amtel. I suppose my question for the group is the expectation that individuals within the community come together. So my neighbours in my immediate roads come together and we have we want to do uh, community-based PV work somewhere within Flitwick, or is the expectation we would want to see the town or parish councils drive the project forward, and as a community, we're looking to be a conduit for the parish or town or, or, or local authority. It was just to get that understanding, because I've, I've been involved in, in similar groups where the community is not exactly 100% sure what the expectations are. There's lots of um, well-meaning people within a group who said we must do this, but then we never get together to see how we can move it forward. So that was just a general question, really. Thank you. I, I could add, I, I'm quite happy to answer that one. Yeah. Thanks, me. I'll go on that one. Okay, so Trevor, yeah, we can work in lots of different capacities. So um, there are some groups that we've worked with that have come from parish councils, and then they have engaged their local community, and also the other way around, local communities that have then engaged their, their parish councils. Um, we would think that you would work quite closely with your parish council, but you wouldn't necessarily need to be driven forward by your parish council. So community energy groups come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, so I run a very small community energy group in my local area, and we've got a non-exec director who is a councillor at the parish council. So that's really useful for us. And that's quite common in community energy groups, um, but definitely not a prerequisite at all. Um, so the best thing to do, is, if you're interested, put in that expression of interest, and um, we can arrange that call with you and look at um, your interests and other interests um, in your local community. Ideally, we would look to get a group of people together um, that have um, at least some time capacity, it doesn't necessarily need to have the skill capacity, but if that comes together, fantastic. And then we can guide you through the whole process rather than it really being reliant on one person or two people to drive it forward. We can be that driver for you. Uh, and start to engage the right people. Um, does, that, yep. does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you very much. It's much appreciated. We've got Steve and then I, I, I've got V Harvey. I didn't, I don't know um, your first name. So oh, if it's Harvey oh. or Vicky, or, but yeah, if you want to go first, Steve, then we'll come to, to Friends yeah. of the Earth. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Steve. A, a committee that is looking at, uh, doing a green energy on village halls. I was particularly interested in your comments you raised about Northumberland, Northumberland uh, Consortia that are looking at uh, greening several village halls and would welcome some point of contact with them so we, we can pursue that. And equally, another question is, um, how on earth do I get to approach the other village halls within the uh, central beds area just to um, touch base with them and, and start to think about what we can do as a, as a whole, you know, uh, economies of scale and, and so forth must be an advantage to everybody in that regard. So, um, yeah, very keen on, on on moving this forward. Thank you. Great question, Steve. I think Ollie's got his hand up to, to give you an answer there. Yeah, I'll jump in there. I mean, Steve, that's the thing. Try and come, come to Kelly, send a, a message to Kelly if you can. You've got her email address there. And then um, we'll have that conversation with the Central Bedfordshire climate team and see if we can arrange, you know, that discussion with the village halls, because yeah. you should have a, an acre network, a rural development network. I'm sure Steve's or Councillor Dixon's aware of them and the team. And um, we'll see if there's a way of connecting all the village halls. It could be, you know, it seems to 
it's come out a few times in this discussion so um and then we can bring in best practice from across the country and it's not only in northumbria we've also seen it across yorkshire and down in sussex as well where they're building momentum to support the village hall networks so yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we've seen an advantage from some counts we're doing that now. Any excess energy we can start to spill out and you know and, and, and either selling it at, econ at an economic economic price to the local church, which is adjacent to it, and, and other facilities. Because we, we we'll, we'll have a rather large, uh, hopefully a rather large uh, PV surface area, which will be generating in excess, hopefully. So yeah, it's still out to do good around the community as well as you know. Uh, uh, making the village hall energy demands much more efficient and green. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And also, I see that um, Steve, that Potton Town Council have talked about a new community hall there, mm -hmm. um, which could be in the same guise. So it's you know, yeah, good, good. it's an opportunity. Yeah. Like you say, we should be um, developing these community buildings to actually. Hmm. generate more power than they use that would be exactly yeah so you're yep. not yep. squashed with a big bill at the end of the day indeed great thank you thank you steve and look forward to getting your expression of interest and then we can have a a good chat hopefully um so to uh south Bed for sure. for sure. It's really sure. Sure. I can speak <laughs> on Friends of the Earth and my name. So oh, I'm, bless you. <laughs> I'm both Central Bedfordshire Councillor and I'm also a member of South Bedfordshire Friends of the Earth. And a couple of challenges we've run into is um, there's a lack of grid capacity in our area. So I wonder for uh, if you'll doing anything that might need to go into the grid there is a problem in the Lake and Buzzard area so I'm wondering how good your connections are with UK power networks and also we've got to develop a locally who has built wind turbines that we've supported as a campaigning group and they are coming up possibly with some other applications for wind turbines and how you see community groups working alongside big developers because there are there are challenges there are the accusations of being selling out particularly if they're housing developers as well um but on the other hand if somebody's producing a four megawatt wind turbine it can make a massive difference to the area much more than spending three years getting three solar panels on someone's roof so i just wonder what you thought about that so um we do have very strong links with um uk power networks um i don't know if ollie or esme wants to chip in on that um, um and about the the wind turbines um yeah, actually, yeah. I can make, I can make a start. Um, so so yes, we there's grid constraints everywhere throughout the country. It's something we're very familiar with. Um, so we um, first of all have that good relationship with UKPN, so we can start to map out where the, the constraints are and where there is any potential capacity in uh, central Bedfordshire. Um, but then we can also um, I'll ideally look at some clever ways of working so that we can limit the export back to the grid. Um, so there's uh, the direct wire, we can look at potential energy clubs um, so that you're not exporting as well. Um, so there's there's a whole range of things um, we can do um, in terms of working with developers. Um, yes, I can see that that is sometimes a tricky issue, um, but in terms of the support we can offer, we can also offer to um, help with some engagement in your local community um, and hopefully um, help to overcome some of those um, thoughts, opinions. Um, and there is all sorts of models about how community energy can work with commercial developers as well. So we can start to look at all of these with you, absolutely. So they're all, all common issues that we've worked on before. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And um, there are a couple of questions in the chat as well. Um, Andrew Gibb asked, um, are there, is there any best practice on making use of thermal imagery cameras for residents and businesses? Um, and yes, there there is um, a great project that started in Bristol that we we um we can share with you. Um, 
and other counties have been doing stuff on thermal imaging as well but the the, the cheese project always memorable because um we're all addicted to cheese not me it's veganuary um but uh uh yeah um there's a great project called cheese which goes into uh, has thermal imaging cameras and a sort of pay it forward scheme um, it starts in bristol and they've got a franchise model um it's proven to work so there's some really great practice there um thanks for sharing ollie um, so yeah, have a have a look at that. Um, Just a quick plug as well, Kelly. I did, it is uh, we've got a webinar coming up on Thursday, and it starts to look at some of the clever business models there are around community energy. I think that covers thermal imaging from memory. Yeah, it does. Um, so if you're interested in some of the kind of clever ways that we can help support local communities, it is a, a slightly more advanced masterclass. But please do come along. Um, and we can, I'm sure, put a link in the chat. One of the team, I'm sure, has got that somewhere. Hand. Yeah, I can. If if they don't have it to hand, um, I can um definitely uh put it in the email that I sent to everyone who could make it today and uh, who couldn't make it. So um, Thursday, 10 a.m. Yes, Thursday, 10 a.m. Um, and there's breakout rooms in that session as well, so you can go and meet the people for, from the from the organizations and ask them a questions direct, which is great. Um, cool. Uh, Councillor Dixon, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I'm, I'm conscious of time. I've seen the chat room, a couple of people have had to leave. Um, I think we'll, we'll round it off on at uh, three o'clock, if we may. Um, I'm, I'm really, really impressed and encouraged, not just by what you've told us, but, but what I've heard and what I see in the chat room, there's, there's clearly that bridge with you guys between our ambition and the appetite from our towns and parishes um, to really interesting stuff there. Um, I think if you go back to our sustainability plan centre, there's a three, three, three parts to it. Lead by example, because we can't ask others to do what we're not doing ourselves. Um, we're looking to invest. Now, this arguably is an investment. We've, we've commissioned you guys to come and help us and our communities. Um, it's not necessarily about putting a hand in a pocket. It's about investing in creating the appetite um, and to influence. And, you know, we've got we've got uh, um, long reach to influencers that can help you. Um, I think the one thing I will say is that I hope like never before, because we've got a common goal here, we can collaborate without any reference to politics. I'm sorry to bring up the P word. Uh, Victoria's nodding because we both agree and we're diametrically opposed. <laughs> uh, can we forget that? We haven't got time to worry about politics. We've got a common goal. Now, uh, I pushed really hard for 2030 for carbon uh, net zero in central beds, and I got a lot of flack for it. Uh, I'd rather aim high, and, and if we undershoot, we undershoot a bit, but I'm really determined. And I need, you know, life is not always about structures like that. That's me at the bottom trying to help whatever I can do. So please, I'm always available 24-7 um, to help you. Our team will help bring together like-minded um, organisations, bodies and opportunities. Don't just think, and I saw something about can church halls be included in village halls? Of course they can, but some won't. Don't think of the physical usual sort of segmentation. Think as wide as you can about how you can work together to collaborate. Um, just picking up a couple of quick things. Lewis got a population of about 20,000. So Flittick, someone from Flittick, you're about 15. You know, you're about the same sort of crew. There's a lot of synergy there that we can draw on, I'm sure. Um, anyone from Central Beds will tell you as well, I'm quite unashamed in my advocacy of small children to create the energy for the change that's needed. It's their future. I'm about to turn a big number this in a couple of months time. I still do this with the enthusiasm every morning I get out of bed for their future. And I think they are, I mean, I've never ever had a child say to me, it's your fault we've got global warming because you're an old fart and you've been driving around in a car for too long. They really want to work with us. Our experience and their energy will make a tremendous difference. So please link up with your schools. They are a tremendous uh, source of uh, energy. Um, just one other thing, uh, and it's sort of it's on the edge of what we just perhaps talked about. I'm a massive advocate on active travel. Um, I'm sure uh, some of the local councillors from Sheffield may have seen me uh, cycling around Sheffield when I come into Morrison's. Um, I'm the idiot with the 
with a, a big long cargo bike. Um, I'd like to encourage locally more car sharing, but I recognize a lot of people won't get in a car with someone they don't know. But if you start local with that, it's going to grow and grow. And I know in Clifton, between us, Paul, and, and me and you, uh, in the middle of Clifton Village, they've broken their village down into about six or seven areas. And then if you want to take reference on someone, they only live just around the corner, and you're more likely to then feel happy to do the car share. Um, and again, if you go back out in the streets, wherever you live, you count the number of cars have only got one person in. It's criminal. If we could just nudge people to a different mode of behaviour, and I'll stop there because I know Victoria's going to shout at me about buses, but it will come. So I was to say thank you very much. I, I'm really enthused by, by what I've seen and heard today. Um, and please, I, I'm here to help and support any time. Well, thank you very much, um, Stephen. That's great to know that you're a fellow cyclist. Um, I, uh, yeah, uh, active travel. It's the only way I keep active, to be honest. It's like if I didn't cycle uh, to and from work and around town, I, I wouldn't get any exercise. So. Kelly, I won't stand up, otherwise I'll just undo all the good work I'll see. I've got a big unit, Paul, aren't I? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's all good. Um, so uh, yeah, there's um, so we've just got George and um, it's Victoria. good for mental health, isn't it, Stephen? And everything else, it's it's so good, and it's good for emissions and air pollution. So there's so many factors to kind of um, active travel that we could talk about for hours and hours, I'm sure. Um, so uh, Vic Vicky, um, have you got you've got another question there? Sorry. Yeah, I've just got a quick point I actually want to back up Councillor Dixon I I challenge him a lot but he really is sticking his neck out for cutting carbon in central Bedfordshire in a range of issues and is really inspirational and comes out to meet people and we also have the team really go out of their way to do stuff um, the team of officers and as well we've got some amazing sustainability projects going on within housing as well so there's a lot of increasing expertise we've got a lead cutting edge care home being built which will be one of the greenest in the UK so there is this wealth of expertise within central Bedfordshire and it will be really good to plug into and I know the team will help with that thank you Thank you. I'm I'm super excited to to be working with the team. I'm really pleased we've got councillors who uh, who get it and um and so many people here today who you know we can really help and support the the various communities, the various parishes, towns, the individuals, whatever whoever is interested in 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 uh, bringing renewable energy and, and powering up and powering down across the area, um, will happily happily work with. So it's it's very exciting time. Times. Um, so thank you all for coming um, and I really appreciate it. There is one, um, George has got his hand up there. I'm just going to take one last question from George before we close off. George, do you want to ask your question? Yes, thank you. I just want to commend the Central Bex and yourselves for putting this program up. My question relates to Bill that recently moved into the area and I have a, 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 a clause in my contract not to be able to even put a, a solar on my on my on my roof. So, it, what is what is the government or maybe local government doing with businesses to help ensure that uh, homes for the future are already uh, working to reduce the, the the impact of climate? And also, where I work, even though I'm a financial controller, uh, and I have seen that our resources uh, for energy is going up and up and up. We don't even know how or where to start to reduce our energy uh, usage. So are there any plans at all to also work with businesses? Because every business is taking ways to reduce the, uh, the impact and it makes financial sense for them. Great question. Thanks, George. Um, uh, well, Stephen well, yeah, Ali, just, you're absolutely right, George. And sorry, we, we tend to concentrate far too much on residential, um, but we have got a team that work with um, businesses in terms of uh, hoping, hoping to reduce their energy consumption. Um, and in fact, I had made a note down here under the, uh, the big cheese uh, project about thermal imaging and businesses, because they're the ones that are the most likely to react and say, you're right, we'll do this. I do recognize 
Um, the difficulties a lot of households may have, um, and I get held to account by Councillor Harvey quite a lot, about how can we help those that are less fortunate in society to, to um, reduce their um, energy costs. But you're quite right, businesses are something that we need to um, continue to push at. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more self-motivated, uh, but it doesn't mean we can't, um, we can't help particularly the smaller ones uh, reduce their energy loss and consumption overall. That's, a, as you said, the power up, power down type approach. So, Councillor Dixon, can I, oh, sorry, can I just add to that, is that um, if you are involved with businesses in central Bedfordshire, think about community energy, because if you have got a high energy usage, maybe you can't afford the solar or renewables, but actually a community energy organisation could. They raise the money from the community to install the solar on the roof and then that gives you a link with the community and lower cost electricity so that's a way i just wanted to say that but also we've got some groups now looking at giving energy advice for local businesses you know hairdressers and things like that where they've got high energy use and just give them tips so that's another initiative that could be developed could be developed thanks sorry and can i can i just add to that as well ollie just to, just to say as well that and um, these initiatives, we do seek funding for them. So you don't necessarily have to volunteer. Um, there is some volunteer work at the initial stages of setting up community energy projects. But this is all about um, creating green jobs in your local area as well. So we have got many funded positions in with community energy groups as they grow. Um, so it's not all about you volunteering your time as well. Can I, the, can I have the last word? I know we're all well trained and always put our microphones on mute, but I've been really impressed, really motivated um, by what you guys have told us today. I knew it was the best idea I'd ever have to get you involved when Sarah and the team came to me. That's the only political bit I'm ever going to do. Um, can you take your microphones on mute? Can you thank you? Because I found this fascinating. It's the start. It's by no means the finish. But please, you know, we're here to help and work together. Um, because we've got a common goal that uh, we can't afford to uh, take our eye off. So thank you very much, and you should be able to hear this. Oh, Gareth, you're way ahead of me there. Well done. <laughs> oh, thanks, thank Stephen. You, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.